So you guys have asked me for gourmand fragrances and I'm delivering. A lot of you guys have asked me for my favorite caramel fragrances, my favorite gourmand fragrances as a non-gourmand lover. So I've already done vanilla fragrances for the Vanilla Hater, which you guys can check out up here. Now I'm doing gourmand fragrances for the gourmand hater, like myself. I don't really like typical gourmand fragrances. So for those of you who are a little bit newer to the fragrance world, gourmand means something that smells edible, something that's typically sweet. And a lot of the times these fragrances fall into the category of dessert smelling fragrances, which I don't really gravitate towards. I like something a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more refined, a little bit more like a fragrance smell. But I do like to keep kind of a, a broad spectrum of fragrances. I like to experiment. I like to think that I have like broad taste. So I do keep some in my repertoire and I do really enjoy a select few gourmands. And I went through my whole collection and I've put together a list of my favorite ones. There are some niche fragrances in here and some designer ones. I'm gonna start with the five designer ones. So I have five designer, I have five niche. So there's a little bit of something for all of you guys with different tastes. Obviously the niche ones are gonna be a little bit more off the beaten path, a little bit more unique and different. Anyway, here we go. Of course, we're gonna start with Olympia. I love Olympia. I call it the strippery fragrance. That it is. It's very sexy, it's very seductive. It's caramelly, salty. It does have this like almost like burnt skin in the sun smell. Very sexy, very like one of my man's favorite fragrances. As you guys know, um, this one, it smells like it's a little bit edible. Like it still smells like a fragrance, but it has edible facets to it. So that caramelly vibe, that like, salty vanilla. There is technically no caramel note in this, but you could lie and tell me there is and I would believe you because it smells that way. It almost smells like like toasted, you know? Lovely, really, really beautiful scent, really in your face, but still smells like a fragrance. Very sexy, love it. That's Olympia. I also really like the other Olympias, but we're gonna stick to the original for this list. Then, we got the Burberry Hers. We've got the original, we've got the intense. The original is yummy, yummy strawberry. This is just like delicious, like almost like musky, airy strawberry. It does bear a very, very, very slight resemblance to Baccarat Rouge. Hang on, Bernie's drinking. That's my dog. We're gonna have to take a quick break. A few moments later, this one is like, it's just full of yummy berry goodness. It smells like a little bit creamy, like it smells very rich, very delectable, like a strawberry like panna cotta or something. It's so good. It's light. It's very addictive. Like you really, really want to keep smelling this. And the strawberry is very dominant here. And then we have the Burberry Her Intense, which is a little bit more powdery and it's more about the blackberry. So it's less about the strawberry, it's more about the blackberry. This one I feel like is way more for the cooler weather. Like I love them both, but I really, really gravitate towards this one in the cooler weather. You get lots of cherry in here as well. So like blackberry, cherry, powdery, and yummy as well. The, the original Burberry Her I like a little bit more in the heat. This one I like a little bit more in the cooler weather. They're both super addictive, super kind of like sweet, yummy, fruity, dessert-like fragrances. So I really like them both. Then we have Victor and Rolf Bon Bon. Another caramel, yummy, fruity bomb. This one is like, if you like uh, Juicy Couture fragrances, like if you like Gold Couture, or if you like the original Viva La Juicy, this is a more like elevated, classy, dare I say, type of fragrance, but I feel like if you like one, you'll like the other. I used to like Viva La Juicy and I cannot stand it anymore. I really don't want to talk about it. So Bon Bon though, really, really nice. Like powdery, vanillary. It almost like reminds me of like if you took a uh, aspect of like Viva La Juicy fragrances and then like YSL Manifesto and then added a little bit of caramel, that's this peachy, caramelly, warm, a little bit powdery, very sexy. And this one does last a really long time on my skin. I get like, I get a, almost a full day's wear. Like I get eight hours, no problem with this one. And 
it's sweet yes but it's not like a candy it doesn't smell like you're just like cupcakes and candy it's actually like classy i know that the packaging is a little questionable like it's literally a candy bow tie let's look past the packaging the smell is actually really nice it actually is yummy pleasant sweet not overly toothache sweet lovely gourmand fragrance very very sexy and i've raved about that one a couple of times i think in general victor and rolf fragrances are really well done but this is i guess the only real gourmand from them like i don't think flower bomb is really a gourmand this one is more gourmandy like it definitely smells a lot more like a dessert so hence why it's here so that's three on four is zadig and voltaire this is her this has chestnut this has sandalwood this is like milky nutty woody like creamy smelling delicious and very unusual like this is not what you would expect from a typical gourmand fragrance this isn't sweet this isn't dessert like it has edible smelling facets like roasted milky chestnut smell and i think there's whipped cream actual like whipped cream smell in here which it definitely comes through and a milky beautiful sandalwood this is very easy to wear this is very a welcoming like cozy pleasant scent it's it's milky like the packaging really really lovely definitely like gourmand in its own interesting way so i really love this one it's a really different kind of smell also with this one i feel like if you like scents like bal d'afrique from by Rito, not that they're similar fragrances but i think if you like that one you would like this because it has this almost similar like creamy lotiony effect then Look, I'm gonna call this designer, it like could be niche, but the price point is closer to a designer price point. You can get it at Sephora. So we're gonna go with Vanilla Woods from Seven Virtues in the designer category. This is delectable caramel pear, like the way that I've described it before when I talked about my favorite clean fragrances is uh, like a poached pear, like drizzled with caramel and like a little sugar encrusted kind of like crust on it. Like imagine you poached a pear and now it has like a little bit of caramel drizzle on it and you coated it in sugar. And so when it baked, it's got this like little bit of like a warm sugary crust. Like if only it could spray it out, but it has a really nice, like warm vanilla -y, like woody base. So it's not just like candy dessert smell. It has a very sophisticated, warm, woody, yummy base. They've done such a good job with this fragrance. And the fact that it's a clean fragrance is wonderful. And it does actually perform like for a clean fragrance. The performance is really good. I get at least six hours out of this one, sometimes eight and I've worn through a couple of samples. Now I'm ready for my full bottle. So I am getting a full bottle. I'm just waiting until my next Sephora like sale or promo. And then my honorable mention for the designer ones because it's discontinued is the Angel Muse Eau de Toilette. I do prefer the Eau de Toilette because it has that added passion fruit note. So it's a little bit lighter. It has a little bit more of a tanginess to it. And it's a little bit more interesting. Like the uh, Eau de Parfum version is a little bit more of like a powdery hazelnut smell. Well, where this is more creamy and that added passion fruit like really lifts it up. So this one, I actually really love wearing in the evenings, even in the summer evenings, like a warm summer evening or going out. This has been the one that I've been reaching for a lot lately. And if you can find it, definitely grab it because I can still find it on sale in many places, but I think it'll be gone soon. So uh, I'm not an angel girl. Like I don't really like Mugler's Angel, like the original but I do really, really like this one. And I don't even like the Angel Muse EDP as much, but this one's like, this one's so good. Okay, I lied again, because I realized that my honorable mentions are all designer ones. So the other honorable mention is Guerlain's La Petite Robe Noire Intense. This one has blueberry and it has cotton candy and it's this like beautiful marshmallowy, delicious, scent it's also discontinued it's sweet but it's powdery and it's not in your face and it's not overly sweet and i love that like blueberry cotton candy it leaves a beautiful trail it's uh it's it was a fragrance that i wore on new year's eve one night and that's the association that i have like this smells like new year's to me this smells like new beginnings and fun parties and just like a really great time i think it's such a beautiful party scent and i think people would really enjoy it around you like it's not cloying it's not overpowering definitely dessert like but still very classy 
So that's it for the honorable mentions and then we're moving on to niche. So my niche loving friends, the first one is Chocolat from Il Profumo. I've been loving Il Profumo as a brand in general. I discovered them when I fell in love with my Fleur de Bamboo, which you guys know I love. But this one is completely different direction. This, honestly, this smells basically almost exactly like Mugler's Angel if you took out the dirty patchouli. So it's more of like a powdery chocolate scent and it's so delectable. Like I could get down with this chocolate scent and I struggle with chocolate fragrances. This is one of the ones that I really, really, really love. It's a little bit boozy. And then when it develops, it goes into like a nice like powdery chocolate. So super wearable. If you like, or you think you could like Angel, but you just can't get past that dirty patchouli smell, this does not have the dirty patchouli. Other than that, it smells very similar. So good, so good. Also, I think if you like Gourmand Coquin from Guerlain, like there's a dupe um, that I talked about in a previous video from Juliana's Perfumes. That's a beautiful dupe of uh, Gourmand Coquin. This one is also kind of similar. It also has this beautiful kind of like boozy, powdery, chocolate, like very sophisticated vibe about it. So I would highly recommend this. I got this from Raffinade Perfumery. They have really great niche fragrances and I always discover really great things from them. And the next one is also from them. And this one is called Lost Alice and it is from Mask Milano. What a unique, different fragrance. Like, I have never smelled anything quite like this. It smells like, like baked bread, like, like wheat and milk. And I think it has carrot seed in there. It's a really interesting concoction. I feel like if you miss Sir Lutin's uh, Jeu de Peau, that one smelled like fresh baked bread or croissants, like it was buttery. This one kind of gives you that vibe. It's a really, really different kind of smelling, like food smell, not food, but like edible type of smell. So different, so interesting. And it transitions like crazy. Like the opening here is almost like fresh and herbal. And then it goes into that like pastry smell, like bakery kind of smell. The whole concept behind this fragrance is that it's meant to smell like the Mad Hatter's tea party from Alice in Wonderland. And so there are notes of tea, there are notes of milk. There's like a very, very lots of different unique mystical kind of scents. It's very different, but I, I get a definite like undeniable bread-like smell, like, like milky bread and like musky, soft, powdery, musky, beautiful. Like it's a gourmand, but it's so different and it's not sweet, not sweet. Next is for the fruity lovers, and this is Jo Malone's Nectarine Blossom and Honey. This smells like a true yummy, like sweet nectarine, like fruit. It's just like the most decadent, yummy, sweet, 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 overly, almost like overly ripe nectarine. And it has like a little bit of like floral facets in there for sure, but it's, it's true nectarine smell. So if you wanted like a sweet powdery, like peachy kind of smell, this is it. I feel like nectarine to me, it smells kind of like peach, but like almost like with tangerine. It's like something in between peach and tangerine. That's nectarine. I know the name sounds like that. I didn't get it from the name for sure. Like I'm telling you the smell. The smell to me smells like peach with some citrus, like sweet citrus. And the opening does have some green notes, but then it fades away, it goes into like a really nice powdery peachy smell. So this is for the like the fruity gourmand lover. And I like a nice fruity scent once in a while. So I will reach for this like on a, like a playful, easy kind of summer day, just like effortless. This is it. It's uh, it's not overly complex. It's not overly sophisticated, but it's cheerful and it's uplifting. So I do really like this one. I am kind of a Jo Malone fan, I realize. I know their fragrances are a little bit overpriced considering the performance isn't really that great, but I just really like how they smell. And then my last two, so the second last one is, how could I do this video and not mention Ylang and Gold? This smells like a dessert. This smells like something that I want to eat. Like I smell it and I start salivating. <laughs> like I am going to drool. It smells like a custardy, like slightly banana-esque, yummy, sweet dessert with ylang. It's a little bit like buttery. And apparently there actually is a dish or dessert that's inspired by this fragrance that I actually need to try one day. 
it's delectable. I've talked about this one so many times. You guys already know my obsession with it. I wear it a lot, especially in the summer. Oh my God, how it blooms in the heat. Like it's lovely. So definitely like an atypical gourmand. I will not blabber on and on about it, I promise. And lastly, for size blondine, this is a buttery lily type of fragrance. It has suede. It's, it's really about like suede, butter and lily essentially that's what it is it smells edible it smells very sophisticated not too sweet like actually like melted butter like if you took melted butter and then you poured it onto your brand new uggs that's what it smells like and in a, in a good way and then there's a very very sweet lily like a like a yummy sweet lily it's such a lovely scent it's a really unusual gourmand it is very expensive and the performance is not the greatest. The projection is not the greatest. I do have to spray a lot of it. So for the price point, it is questionable and that's why it is the last one that I'm mentioning, but I do love how this smells. Like when a cooler day hits, even in the summer, I reach for this. It's just so lovely. So that is it. Those are all of my favorite gourmands. So gourmands, for the gourmand hater, if you will. Please leave me a comment down below with your favorite gourmand fragrance, whether for the gourmand hater or not. I'll definitely check it out. I always love exploring and discovering new things. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really means a lot to me. Please hit subscribe. If you guys are not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that sub button, become a friend of the show. We'll do all the fun fragrance things together and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.